Hello and welcome to the final installment of the Central Texas High School football webcast. I'm Rich Tiarina along with Rick Cantu and for the second time in three weeks, George Brazil, the venerable George Brazil. Uh, we traded uh, Alan to the uh, Lady Longhorns tonight. He's uh, covering Jody Conrad. So uh, we're going to do things a little bit differently this week for our uh, last installment of this uh, weekly series. Uh, we're going to break down the playoffs. So uh, but before we do that, we do have a little bit of uh, business to attend to from last week, most notably uh, giving out our game balls and naming our player of the week. Guys, uh, hand your game balls when you're ready. Who's going first? I'll to go first uh, because it's a broken record because we say this guy's name almost every week. Uh, okay. Leander quarterback Josh McKinley, the senior, all he did was rush 18 times for 196 yards. He passed for 75 yards. He ran an 86-yard touchdown. Uh, big victory over Cedar Park. It, it, it ensured that they uh, finished unbeaten in district and uh, defended their district championship. So I'm going with Josh McKinley. Excellent. How about you, George? Uh, my choice is Cameron Bell running back from Stony Point. Uh, Stony Point beat Westwood, which is bound for the playoffs. 14 to 10, Bell had both touchdowns and 288 yards rushing. One reason I chose Bell is because uh, I think he probably represents the spirit of, the, of Stony Point. They could, uh, they lost five or six district games in a row and they could have checked it in. Instead, they came back and beat Westwood. Yeah, so many close uh, losses this year for Stony Point it was a impressive way to end the season, uh, beating Westwood. Yeah, they, they, they finished three and seven, and uh, with any luck, they could have been seven and three. Yeah. Well, they had some luck. It was bad, though. <laughs> it was bad luck if they didn't have any. Oh. Yes. Our uh, player of the week, which we'll announce tomorrow in the paper, but it's going to be Kevin Smith, the skiing quarterback. Threw for 340 yards, four touchdowns, and a, an easy win over Bowie. Matadors, uh, we may talk, we'll talk about them in a little bit, but Matadors are one of uh, Central Texas' hottest teams. Uh, they won nine straight. So a big game for Kevin Smith, and uh, that's our player of the week for this week. When we come back, we will talk a little playoffs. Well, guys, 11 weeks ago when we started the season, we were uh, hot to talk about uh, Westlake's chances. Uh, we liked them uh, for being a deep, uh, talented team in the 5A field. We liked Copper's Cove in 4A, moving down from 5A. We wondered if Wimberley uh, could put it together again for another run. We liked Giddings as a possible uh, state championship contender. Eleven weeks later, we're uh, kind of looking at some of the same questions, I guess, with those same teams. Let's break it down uh, class by class in some of the bigger classes. Starting off with 5A, Westlake, Seguin, both Division I teams out of the same district. Uh, which one goes farther, and if they meet again in the playoffs, because they're both Region Four, Division Two. I'm sorry, Division One teams. Who wins that rematch, Rick? You were at the first I, game. I was at Seguin. the first yeah. game, and I was very impressed with the Seguin players. They look like they have more collegiate athletes on that team. They had six four wide receivers, and and Westwood had uh, Westlake had five ten defensive backs, and mm -hmm. it, it really did seem like a mismatch in that way. At the same time, I thought. Westlake had a better team. Um, I thought Westlake's quarterback, Nick Foles, was a, a step better than Seguin's quarterback, even though he's awfully good, too, as we know from Player of the Week honors. But uh, if they if they meet again, it's going to be an awfully close game. But uh, Westlake's got that intangible. They've been to the playoffs so many times. And uh, it's rare when they go to the playoffs and don't make some sort of impact. And Seguin is sort of new at this whole thing. So uh, I, I would go with Westlake if, uh, if they meet again in the third or fourth round. George, we hear so much about the Westlake mystique. Once we get to this stage of the season, the playoffs, how much does that really matter? And is Seguin's newness, uh, you know, as a playoff uh, a team a hindrance or a positive possibly for them? Uh, I don't know. It's difficult to say. Uh, the uh, Westlake mystique, May not not doesn't seem quite be to be quite as intense as it was say four or five years ago. But uh, I don't. Rick is right. If they play again, it'd be a whale of a ball game. Yeah, absolutely. Well, let's move on to uh, District 14 5A. Uh, Leander looks good heading in. Cedar Park uh, a little bit of a mystery, I guess. They've lost uh, what two of their last three games, I believe, and they opened with Harker Heights in uh, Division Two, they They're also in the same region as Leander in the same division, so that could be another 
uh, rematch game down the road. But I'm most intrigued by Round Rock. These guys uh, qualified in the last week of the season. They've had one of those years up and down with a lot of talent, and uh, uh, but they worked their way in by beating Pflugerville, nice win, and they open up with A&M Consolidated. Do, uh, so my question is, uh, who has the better chance at winning their first round game? Round Rock versus a state-ranked and consolidated team, or San Marcos against a state-ranked uh, Smithson Valley team? Oh, that's a tough one. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I, or they I, both I, lose. <laughs> well, no, I mean, if one wins, I think it would be Round Rock. Uh, I just have a lot of respect for Smithson Valley. Mm -hmm. uh, as good as they that program is, uh, they've been in the state finals a couple times, and uh, uh, San Marcos is good, but they're not in that class. Round Rock is still a little bit of a mystery team, like you said. You never know when they're going to put it all together. They've got really good athletes. Uh, Kirkendall, James Kirkendall is very good. Jimmy Anderson is very good, wide receiver and cornerback. Mm -hmm. uh, if one springs an upset, I, I, I would think it would be Round Rock. You agree with that, George? I'd be inclined to think so. Uh, although uh, A&M Consolidated has been ironing people out of, of the last couple of weeks compared to the district, uh, memory serves. Uh, I think they beat Harker Heights by something like four touchdowns. So uh, I don't. It's. I wouldn't uh, say the chances of either Round Rock or San Marcos are real good. <laughs> and Consolidated actually, they're one of the few teams that actually beat Leander, and Leander has turned out to be an excellent team. So for right. A and M Consolidated to come here and beat Leander on their home field is earlier in the season, but that that was a big deal. Absolutely. Um, good. Well, let's uh, before we move on to 4A, let's uh, just pick our one 5A area team that uh, is our personal pick to go the farthest. Oh, boy. Uh, I'm going to surprise you guys, and I'm going to take Austin High. Hmm. A little, uh, they, I think in the last five games of the season, I think their last five games were better than in anybody else's. Uh, in the 5A level in this area. Uh, I love Davis Collins as a running back. Uh, he's been carrying the load. They're a little bit of a mystery team, but uh, they're very fast on, on, on offense and very feisty on defense. And uh, they're, they're to the point now where they mentally think that they're going to win games, which uh, they haven't always had. I know it'd be a little bit of an upset if they go deep, but uh, they just celebrated their 125th anniversary there, and this is a kind of a magical year for, for Austin High. And uh, uh, just look for them. It, it, it might be an upset, but I'm picking uh, the Maroons. Speaking of anniversaries, this is the 10-year anniversary of Westlake's uh, state championship in 1996. Is, uh, is how far do the Chaps go, or do you like another team in our area, George, to go farther in 5A? Uh, I, my pick is, is Leander. Uh, uh, I just think things are pretty well set up in the, the bracket for probably at least to get to the third round. Mm -hmm. Good. I'm going to go with Seguin. Combination of those uh, receivers you mentioned earlier. Uh, good matchups on offense, and that defense has been strong all year. So Your I'll special go. teams are good, too. Yes, yeah, Desmond outs. Jackson, actually. Yes, very good. All right, let's move on to 4A. A uh, big question heading into the season, Coppers Cove and Hayes, how are they going to fare in 4A after being very good 5A programs? They uh, are both in the playoffs. Both have some question marks, though. Coppers Cove last, lost last week to Waco for the district championship. Do you think there's any carryover? Does that, does that carry over into the playoffs at all for, for that caliber of a program or not particularly? I don't know. It's, they're playing Waxahachie the first round, and Waxahachie's got a pretty good recent tradition, so... Uh... I don't think it's going to be a. It's not going to be a walkover for Coppers Cove. Mm -hmm. And of course, Hayes didn't win the district. I, I believe uh, no, Church Clements won the district, right. and Hayes was runner-up. Is that right? They did. Yeah, I believe so. Uh, and Hayes got real toughy anyway, as well as like Travis throws the ball. Right. Right. What do you, what do you think about those? Oh, that's a it's it's tough because when you don't see a team like Waxahachie all year and you hear about them in the newspaper or maybe some clips on TV, uh, Cove lost a, a really tough game last week, but they played an excellent team. It was uh, Waco right. High. They were ranked uh, number ten if, in the state, if I'm not mistaken. So the I think that they have to put that game behind them because if they don't. Uh, like an old basketball coach uh, from El Paso once told me, whatever you do, if you lose one game, don't make it two 
from the same instance. And uh, so uh, I'd be surprised if Cove didn't bounce back, but uh, you never know, Waxahachie may, may be good. Yeah. And then uh, another interesting uh, uh, playoff team from our area in 4A is Connolly. They made uh, been pretty quiet this year, obviously, they didn't win their district. But these guys have uh, made it to the state semifinals two years in a row in Division One. They're back in Division One in the uh, 4A playoffs. You know, can we expect a realistic shot at a third straight uh, you know, flirtation with a state final from, from the Cougars, or too late maybe to put the ball together for the playoffs? Uh, I think their quarterback position has gone up and down all year, yeah. and that's been a position where they've been really excellent the last few years. And uh, Connolly's been to the playoffs eight years in a row, and it's it's pretty amazing that they've been that consistent. I think that they lost so many good players off last year's team, though, that I'd be surprised if they made it too far into the playoffs this year. Uh, Matt Monzingo does a great job as coach, especially with a unit that's not as good as they used to be. But um, with the talent level they have now, I think it would be very difficult. Any of our other area, or do you have anything to say about uh, Connolly, George? Uh, according to this playoff bracket here, if they can beat New Braunfels, they probably would get sent Alamo Heights the next round after that. And uh, Alamo Heights pretty well dominated the 27 4 mm -hmm. so uh, it's going to probably that Conley and New Braunfels is a rematch. I think they played each other the last couple of years, and the, the games have been fairly close. So it, I'd say uh, Rick knows them better than I do. But if they've got quarterback inconsistencies, they're probably not. Yeah. Not a real good choice to maybe even make the well possibly the third round something like that. And here we have been talking about Coppers Cove and Hayes and Connolly. Are we? Uh, we're missing not mentioning maybe some of our other yeah we're missing teams. the opposite the obvious team here is Lake Travis yeah uh, Lake Travis is uh, they've got one of the neatest uh, offenses in, in the city uh, uh, Garrett Gilbert has turned out to be a well of a quarterback uh, he's only a sophomore and I wouldn't be surprised to see him in in, in college football in in a couple of years uh, mm -hmm. they they've they've been very strong in the second half of the year uh, if I were to pick one four a team locally to do well. Uh, maybe advance far in the playoffs. I would, I would take Lake Travis. How do you feel about that, George? What about McCallum, guys? We well, uh, asked me about Lake Travis. Yeah, uh, I, Lake Travis has got a, a pretty good shot. I would say at getting them through the first couple of rounds, mm -hmm. maybe even to the possibly to the semifinals. I don't know. It's a lot of things have to break right. But. McCallum yeah. went to the third round last year, if I'm not mistaken, and. Uh, uh, Pat Honeycutt does a tremendous job with those guys. Uh, they've they've won district three years in a row with uh, perfect records. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe it's a team that's going to sneak up, but we didn't hear that much about them during the season because they're so much better than their competition in, in district, district that yeah. we rarely talk about them because they're so automatic. So that could be a that could be a kind of a mystery team, like Allen. Yeah, they've got that uh, one great running back in Marcus Mann who runs for 250 yards and three touchdowns a week. It seems like. <laughs> And a defense that has been pretty consistent, and their only loss, Austin High. You're picked to well, you know, go far Austin five High a, so. obviously is an excellent team. I didn't yeah. know it back then, but uh, we know it now. All right, well, let's move on to three A. Probably our most interesting uh, uh, class, as it has been all year, probably in Central Texas, with uh, so many quality, you know, state uh, state level teams. We're talking about Wimberley and Hutto and and Liberty Hill and. Uh, uh, you know, even Cameron Yo should be probably included in that mix. A little bit different, though, this year in that uh, Wimberley, defending state champion in Division One, is now Division Two, which places them in the same uh, uh, you know division as, uh, as as some of those great 3A teams in our area, Hutto and Cameron Yo. The lone Division One team in our area that uh, is expected to go well is Hutto, which almost missed the playoffs. Uh, they were two points away from not even making the postseason. Uh, how do we see uh, the 3A, the 3A playoffs breaking down in our area? Well, we've, we've potentially got a an excellent uh, third round game between Wembley and Quero. Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, let's see, uh, Liberty Hill is is playing China Spring this week. Right. Is that? Uh, is that offense a uh, state championship 
worthy offense. Well, it got up to, to got up to the semifinals two years ago or three years ago, whenever it was. Yeah. Uh, I just hope they don't have to throw though. They, they average about fifteen yards a game. <laughs> you know, Wimberley uh, they lost the first game of the season and they didn't look very good at all in that game and. They've come back to win nine in a row, mm -hmm. so uh, maybe they're peaking at the right time. Yeah, and uh, it's interesting, Wimberley uh, last year won with uh, defense and that running back, Michael Buse. This year seems to be winning with their quarterback in the uh, passing game with uh, Ricky Beatty, and the defense has been almost seems just as good as, as good. it has been code, in the past. Code so. red defense. Is, yeah, uh, code is red that. again. Well, how about Hutto, guys? Uh, uh, kind of I like Huddle, but not as much this year as last year. It seemed like last year they had more depth, especially on the offensive line. They were mm -hmm. very good. Uh, Jeremy Curley, a quarterback, is still an amazing athlete, but uh, without those big horses in front of him to block the way, uh, his stats haven't been quite as good. And Huddle, their their reputation is good now, and they're winning partly because of their reputation. But uh, I can't see Huddle going too far just because they lost so many guys from last year's team. Were you at the Giddings Wimberley game? Uh, yes, I was. I'll ask a similar question to the Westlake uh, Seguin earlier. If we reach a playoff uh, rematch with uh, Giddings and Wimberley, uh, how do you see that it going? A, it was a funny game because Giddings won fairly easily, which at the time was a big surprise because mm -hmm. uh, Wimberley had just won 15 in a row last year. Uh, but it, Giddings doesn't look like they've slowed down at all. Uh, they have the most explosive running quarterback in Central Texas in uh, Brock Fitzhenry, and uh, he gets 250, 280 every game. They had no answers for him then. I don't know if they have an answer for him now. If I had to pick today, I would say that, that Giddings yeah. would have the edge over Wimberley. You see that shaking out probably that way as well, George? Probably so. According to this bracket here, we see them against each other in the state semifinals. So. Whatever. That'd be a lot of fun. That'd be, <laughs> That'd a, lot be of fun. a fun get game. Them, get them both there. All right, who's our one pick and two in uh, 3A to uh, make it the farthest then, either in Division One or Division Two? Giddings. I'll go Giddings. I'll go Giddings. There you go. All right, well, uh, when we come back, we'll uh, pick our three games of the week and uh, go on from there. All right, all that's left to talk about is uh, our three picks of the week. We've got uh, three playoff games. Uh, kept them all local for us this week. Uh, first one in Class 4A, Lake Travis and Hayes. They are playing Saturday uh, here at uh, is it our ISD Complex. I think they're playing at Westlake, aren't they? Are they playing at Westlake? It's right here. I should know that. It is at Westlake. It is at Westlake. Um, shoot, I wonder if anyone of us is going to pick Hayes, but I'm going with Lake Travis. I'm going with Lake Travis. I'm going to go with Lake Travis. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I suspected as much. Okay, how about the second one? Another 4A game. Connolly and New Braunfels, another Saturday game. Um, you know, both with no, their that, question marks tough, there. That's a yeah. tough game. Uh, George, you go first. Very shaky vote for Connolly. <laughs> very shaky vote for Connolly. I got a very shaky vote for New Braunfels. There you go. I'll stick with Connolly as well. I, I'll give them the playoff experience nod there. <laughs> Uh, last game in 5A, Cedar Park, Parker Heights, Friday night at Bible Stadium. So it's a home game there for Cedar Park. I think the fact that it's a home game really favors the home team, uh, Cedar Park. They've played awfully well there. They know the territory. They know the turf. Uh, their running back, Tyler Smith, has come back from his injury right. fairly well. That's when they had a little lull in the, at the end of the season when he was uh, injured. But uh, Tyler Smith and, and Cedar Park, uh, that's my team in that game. I so I was waiting for you to, historically, you would say, but I'll go with Harker Heights. <laughs> in this case, I'm not going with Harker Heights. I'm going to go with Cedar Park as well. I think because they have just played some really important games in the last couple of weeks. They played that big Westwood game, the big Leander game. I think that's kind of a good playoff prep for them, even though they didn't... Uh, win those games, but still. Uh, I think George wants to take Harker Heights. I think he does, too. I feel uh, that. I'm afraid not. Harker Heights is coming off four touchdown loss. I think it was A&M oh. So Cedar Park is my choice. Yeah, it, is, it is research. All right. Well, uh, you log on to statesman.com slash pick them. Uh, you'll find a list of every playoff game this week involving area teams. You can make your picks against our picks and uh, see how you fare against us. Thanks a lot for viewing. See you next season.